Since the beginning of the Cold War, U.S. strategic aviation has developed at a tremendous pace. In just 10 years, the world saw such aircraft as the Peacemaker, B-36, the Jet Stratojet, B-47, the Stratofortress, B-52, in service for over 70 years, and the first supersonic bomber, the Convair, B-58. The last two can be called the pride of American aviation of the time, however, the intercontinental B-52 lacked speed, while the supersonic B-58 lacked range. Proceeding from that, the U.S. designers tasked to create a new aircraft combining the advantages of these two machines. That's how the XB-70 was born. About how and why the fastest bomber in the world was created, and why it still didn't go into mass production, you'll learn right now. This is military news. Let's go. XB-70 Valkyrie began to create in the 1950s to replace the previously mentioned Stratofortress. The main task of the new aircraft was the ability to carry nuclear weapons, and it was necessary to carry it to the territory of the main enemy at that time, the Soviet Union. In 1954, a tender was announced with six major aircraft manufacturers participating. North American and Boeing made it to the final. Both presented their projects, of which North American was recognized as the most promising. Then the program began. A real contest was organized for the name of the project, where 20,000 applications chose the name Valkyrie, in honor of the Scandinavian warrior. The first wing, consisting of 30 new planes, was to be equipped by 1963. However, the grand plans were never implemented. The thing is that the air defense systems of the ground-to-air type, developed at the end of the decade, put under doubt the concept of invulnerability of the B-70. The U-2 shot down near Sverdlovsk only confirmed these fears. This event forced engineers to reconfigure the Valkyrie flight to ultra-low altitude with terrain avoidance. But the future bomber was not suited to such tasks. The emergence of more effective and less costly intercontinental ballistic missiles ICBMs, as well as budget cuts in the program, never made it possible to carry out the plan. Surprisingly, after the program was phased out in 1961, the Valkyrie was not forgotten. The development was sent to a research center where the two prototypes created were tested related to the study of aerodynamics, engine performance, and other issues concerning the flight of large aircraft at supersonic speeds. So the prototype, named AV-1, took off on September 21, 1964. The flight, by the way, was not entirely successful and ended in a fire. But already in the third flight the same year, the bomber reached supersonic speed, Mach 1.1. It made 83 flights with more than 160 hours of flight time. It was then retired to the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Ohio. The fate of the second prototype, codenamed AV-2, was not as successful. Despite the apparent success, in 1966 it set a new record, achieving a speed of Mach 3.08 and sustaining it for a full 20 minutes, the aircraft made only 46 flights for just a total of under 100 hours. This was since the same year, during a promotional campaign for the General Electric Corporation, the prototype collided with an F-104 fighter jet and crashed. Later, the story even made it to the pages of the novel Ride of the Valkyries by Stuart Slade. Speaking about the characteristics of the aircraft, it's worth noting that it was quite large, its length was 56 meters, and its wingspan was 32. The XB-70 was designed according to the duck aerodynamic scheme with a triangular wing, forward horizontal plumage FPG, and two keels. The structure consists of titanium plates and the skin is made of titanium alloys combined with high-strength tooling and stainless steel. This makes it capable of withstanding high temperatures of up to 330 degrees during supersonic flight. When stopping, in addition to disc brakes, three huge brake parachutes with a diameter of 8.5 meters each are used. An interesting feature was the use of compression lift in flight. This means that the sharp points of the aircraft increase the pressure beneath it and form shock waves, which in turn create additional lifting force. To create this effect, our hero's wingtips are lowered 65 degrees. In the two-seater cockpit, a modern, for its time, rescue system consisting of ejection seat capsules providing an emergency escape from the plane at altitudes from sea level to 24,000 meters is thought out. 
The XB-70's equipment consisted of a navigation and bomber system, ANASQ-28, which included inertial navigation and astro navigation systems. Thanks to this system, it was possible to program the route, calculating the location of the aircraft, flight time, and distance to the target. In addition, the Valkyrie had a radio navigation system, TACAN, state identification system, radar and infrared jamming stations, as well as equipment for meeting the bomber with the tanker and for landing on the instruments. All this was supplemented by a radar system built by the same General Electric company. As for the power plant, the XB-70 was originally planned to be equipped with new turbojet engines, J93 GE5. Notably, the standard fuel, namely JP-4 aviation kerosene, was not suitable for their operation. This is due to high vapor pressure and excessive evaporation. Because of this, a new fuel, JP-6, based on boron hydrogen compounds had to be developed. Even though it gave 40% more energy than JP-4, it had to be abandoned. This is because boron compounds were, firstly, extremely toxic, and secondly, reacted with various elements, including nitrogen, and very often exploded. Oh yes, the price of JP-6-2 did not please the developers, as it was about $1.5 per pound compared to the previous $0.02 cents per pound of JP-4. The final choice was the General Electric engines, YJ-93 GE-3, which were installed in as many as six units. However, they did a pretty good job and provided the plane with a speed of over Mach 3, that is over 3,500 kilometers per hour. At the same time, the flight range was impressive, equal to almost 7,000 kilometers. As for the maximum altitude, then here too, a very worthy figure, equal to 23,500 meters. Combat load reaches 24.5 tons, and even though almost 60% of that weight accounts for the fuel, Valkyrie has a decent amount of ammunition. The bomber is capable of carrying up to 14 nuclear bombs, as well as conventional shells. Among them would be the WS-199B Bold Orion nuclear-armed ballistic missiles with a range of 1,770 kilometers. The AGM-48 Skybolt double-stage ballistic missile, development of which began in 1959 but was not completed. During the tests in the second half of the 1960s, experimental aircraft have set several records. In particular, in 1966, the Valkyrie reached its maximum speed of 3,250 km per hour. The same year, it reached its maximum flight altitude, 23,000 meters, as well as the longest duration of supersonic flight at Mach 3, equal to 33 minutes. Creating this large-scale project, in which, by the way, more than $1.5 billion were invested, America counted on the obvious success. And it's quite ironic that all these plans were broken by technological progress and intercontinental ballistic missiles that appeared too soon and quickly replaced the bulky XB-70. But even without joining the ranks of the U.S. Air Force, this machine made a tremendous contribution to the development of domestic aviation. In particular, the experience of building this aircraft helped in the development of the B-1 strategic bomber program. I hope this video was helpful for you. Give us your likes, leave comments, and of course subscribe, because a new review will be released soon. See you again soon.